All right, good Sunday afternoon, everybody. I have Dr. Fauci here that's going to be talking about this new Omicron virus, this variant from COVID um, that could be a mess here in the U.S. Here's Dr. Fauci. President's Chief Medical Advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci, thank you for joining us this morning. Have we detected the Omicron variant here in the United States yet? No, we have not, George, and we have a pretty good surveillance system. But as we all know, when you have a virus that has already gone to multiple countries, inevitably it will be here. The question is, will we be prepared for it? And the pre preparation that we have ongoing for what we're doing now with the Delta variant just needs to be revved up. And that's the bottom line of that is the preparation by getting more and more people vaccinated and getting the fully vaccinated boosted. That's what we can be doing. But we are on the lookout for this. The CDC has a good surveillance system. So if and when, and it's going to be when it comes here, hopefully we will be ready for it by enhancing our capabilities via the vaccine, masking, all the things that we do and should be doing. Let's go through what we know and what we don't know about the Omicron variant. Number one, is it more transmissible than other variants? It appears to be, George. It has the molecular characteristics that would strongly suggest that it would be more transmissible. It has a bunch of mutations a disturbingly large number of mutations in the spike protein, which is the business end of the virus, which really binds, particularly in one particular component of that spike that binds to the receptors in your body, in your nose, in your, in your nasopharynx, and in your lung. The mutations would strongly suggest that it would be more transmissible and that it might evade some of the protection of monoclonal antibodies and convalescent plasma and perhaps even antibodies that are induced by vaccine. If you look at the pattern of what's going on right now in Southern Africa, particularly in South Africa, when you have a spike of infections, they are very heavily weighted towards this new variant, the Omicron. And therefore, you have to presume that it has a good degree of transmissibility advantage, which is very likely what is going on right now in Southern Africa and would likely be going on in other countries as it spreads. Do we know if it causes more severe disease? Great question, George, and we don't know that. In fact, we were on the phone with our South African colleagues who have been incredibly good about being so transparent about what's going on there on Friday. And we're meeting with them again today, a little bit later on in a couple of hours, to try and find out if the cases that they've identified that clearly are caused by this variant, what is the level of severity in that? Hopefully it will be light, but you know, South Africa has a relatively small proportion of the population that's vaccinated. So you gotta take that into the equation when you're trying to figure out where this virus is really going and what its impact is gonna be. But bottom line, George, we don't know yet what the level of severity will be. You mentioned the possibility that it can evade our defenses. What do we know about how resistant it is to the current vaccines? We don't have a definitive answer to that, George, and we will know that likely within a period of about two weeks. And the way you find that out is you get the virus and you put it either as the whole virus or as what we call a pseudovirus, and you take antibodies or serum from people who've been vaccinated and you determine if those antibodies can neutralize the virus. That whole process is already underway right now and hopefully we'll be able to determine. When you talk about that, George, it really is important to point out that when you have a high level of antibodies, the way you get with the boosters that we've been doing lately in this country and elsewhere, you lift up the level of the neutralizing antibodies high enough that it generally crosses over and covers several of the variants, including the Delta variant, which makes us even more emphatic and saying even with a variant that we don't know yet the full impact that it's going to have on protection against vaccine-induced antibodies, get boosted, get vaccinated, and you're going to bring that level right up. I don't think there's any possibility that this could completely evade any protection by a vaccine. And it may diminish it a bit, but that's the reason why you boost. And what do we know if, about whether vaccines can then be tailored to address this variant? The companies are already doing that as you and I are speaking, George. So there are two ways to approach it. There's to get the level of the regular type of classic antibodies that we've been dealing with right now, get it at a high level, and or 
develop a variant specific boost, a various specific vaccine. And we've been on the phone with all of the companies right now, and they're already in the process of doing that. We're seeing these travel bans. Are they going to make any difference? You know, it will slow things down, George. Travel bans, when you have a highly uh, transmissible virus, never completely would get the virus to coming, uh, prevent it from coming into the country. No way that's going to happen. But what, what you can do is you can delay it enough to get us better prepared. And that's the thing that people need to understand. If you're going to do the travel ban the way we've done now and that we're implementing right now, utilize the time that you're buying to fill in the gaps. And by time biting, you learn more about the virus. You learn what its relationship is to the antibodies induced by vaccines. And above all, you use this time to really, really put your pedal to the floor and get people vaccinated and get people boosted. It's going to give us a period of time to enhance our preparedness. I think we have to give kudos to the South Africans for being so transparent so quickly by giving us this information. And, so they're giving and, us time to be better prepared. And what's your best guidance about traveling outside of the country right now? You know, travel during a period of a pandemic, George, is always risky. Right now, people should be prudent. And, and the best way to protect yourself if you're going to travel, have to travel or want to travel, is to get vaccinated and to be prudent when you travel about wearing masks in indoor settings, such as if you go to the airport, which is one of the most congregate settings you could imagine with all the crowds in the airport, make sure you wear a mask. But above all, vaccination will be the really most important way to really prevent you from being at such a high risk that you would not want to travel. Should we expect to be seeing more lockdowns again, new lockdowns, more mandates? You know, I don't know, George. It's really too early to say. We just really need to, as I've said so often, prepare for the worst. And it may not be that we're going to have to go the route that people are saying. This, we don't know a lot about this virus, so we want to prepare as best as we can. But it may turn out that this preparation, although important, may not necessarily push us to the next level. People talking about lockdowns, people talking about that. Let's see what the information that we're getting in real time tells us. And we'll make decisions based on the science and the evidence the way we always do. But you want to be prepared to do anything and everything. And that's the reason why we're playing such close attention to this and why we're all over it. Dr. Fauci, thanks as always for your time and your information. Thanks. Good to be with you, George.